This morning we're getting answers from Dr. Fred Lopez, an infectious disease specialist with LSU Health. Thank you so much for being with us. Let's jump right in. New symptoms for children and young adults. I'm hearing that there's blue or purple lesions on their feet and toes called COVID toes. And then some children have Kawasaki disease. Have you seen any of this? Yeah, there have definitely been some reports of uh, skin manifestations of COVID-19 illness, some of which are described as COVID toes, purplish, sometimes blistering lesions over the hands, um, fingers, toes, and feet. Um, you can also see other types of rashes that are more generalized and look like other viral-like rashes that okay. we see uh, with viruses that can cause infection. And this inflammatory state in children, particularly infants, causing Kawasaki-like illness has also been described. We are learning more and more about this illness every day. You just noticed that the CDC updated six new symptoms over the weekend to mm -hmm. be associated now with COVID-19 in addition to the fever, shortness of breath, and cough that's been originally described as part of the symptomatic presentation. So again, learning more and more about this illness. Still don't know enough though. So scary. All right, let's get to a viewer question. If we don't see a spike in cases while the stay at home order is relaxed, will that be enough proof that we're ready to open more businesses? Yeah, so, you know, there's a the, the process of uh, going from one phase to another is really dependent on on several principles. One is that there's a downward trend of COVID-19 like symptoms and illnesses um, over a 14 day period. One is that there's a decrease in the actual number of cases of COVID-19 being diagnosed over a two week period. And another is that hospitals are treating patients um, without crisis care. And lastly, that there really is a robust testing system in place so we can identify individuals who are infected, isolate them, and then do contact tracing in order to minimize the spread of infection. Right. Each time those requirements are met without a state or a region seeing a rebound in cases, then they can move on to the next phase. Speaking of testing, another viewer says when healthcare leaders talk about a need for ramped up testing, are they pushing for a situation involving everyone getting tested? Um, ideally, yes. I mean, we've been doing a lot of testing in Louisiana. We're amongst one of the states um, that has the highest per capita test rate. But even we would like to see more tests available, uh, maybe 200,000 tests perhaps being done per month by the um, by the end of May. So yes, we want to ramp up testing. We want it to be available for people who have symptoms. And ideally, we would like to have some type of surveillance testing that will allow us to know not just who's symptomatic with infection, but what about that denominator of the population that doesn't have any symptoms who are infected? And right. that would require surveillance testing. And so ideally, yes, that would be a part of the ramp up and testing as we move into the future. All right, thank you so very much for your expertise. We really appreciate it. And guys, Dr. Lopez will be back in our next half hour to answer more of your questions. You can text them to the number you see right there on your screen.